So the end of college, my junior and senior year, I get a gig playing with Walter Davis at Barry Harris's jazz showcase. I had been following my friend Terrence Blanchard, and his success with just being hired to Art Blakey and the Jazz Messenger. Art came out to bandstand once at the Jazz Forum on Broadway, taps me on the shoulder on the way to the dress room. All right, so now I know he knows that I exist in the universe. And Winton comes down and reintroduces me to Art. This is Ralph Peterson, He's, he can swing, you ought to hear him play. But he didn't say come back to the gig, what he said was be at the rehearsal tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And then he didn't show up. Art arrives about 7. <laughs> I'm looking for him at 2, he comes at 7. But the first thing he asked was, was he on time? Not did he play the music, how'd he sound, was he on time was the first question. And so it got to the end of the night and I played and Art is heading back towards the bandstand and I launch into but I but but about boom the theme, my best Art Blakey imitation. Because I since I was taught and I sincerely believe imitation is the beginning of the process. You have to tr pick some guys that you want to sound like and study their vocabulary. And who you are will eventually emerge from that process. That night, he started going on and on about the, I'm going to put the big band together again, and you're going to play with me, and we're going to put all the guys back together again. Then he started naming people that weren't alive anymore. And so I wasn't sure whether it was him or the white wine talking. But three months later, true to his word, I got called to do the 1983 Boston Globe Jazz Festival at Berklee College of Music, Berklee Performance Center with the R. Blakey Two Drummer Big Band. And I continued to play in the Jazz Messenger Big Band setting until Art's passing. So the responsibility, the honor, with the honor comes the responsibility of being one of the last cats or maybe the last cat that Art himself chose. enough to finish school right at the beginning of that early 80s jazz renaissance. Blue Note was looking to get in on that energy and decided to put together a stable band and that's how OTB came about. It was a Blue Note stable band and that gave me the opportunity to flex my muscles as a co-leader, as a writer and as an arranger and as uh, somebody who could pick up the mantle of leadership. If there, if Ralphie has magic, it is a direct result of the people that came before me. I am who I am musically because of my willingness to increase my awareness of people like Elvin Jones and Art Blakey and Tony Williams and Max Roach and Roy Haynes. From art I learned to play like my life depended on it every time, because it does.